Hi guys! This week I am going to be focusing on the 20th century again. Um, I've already done a ton of World War II videos because they're really popular. Everyone plays World War II armies. But I still really wanted to focus in on some of the other battles and conflicts that happened during that century because it was a really busy one for that kind of thing. Uh, so this week I'm going to be doing the, the prequel to World War II, if you will, which is of course World War I, and arguably one of the biggest catalysts for World War II happening in the first place. It's also sort of a commemorative year for World War I, so there's a lot of attention being paid to it right now on television and on the radio and books and things. Um, I have picked out this figure to paint. This is a um, British officer figure from Renegade Miniatures, so yay, a uh, new manufacturer I haven't ever done before. He is a nice, beefy, chunky kind of figure, which is the kind I really enjoy painting. Um, and, as you probably know, most uniforms from World War I, or at least the sort of normal uniforms, were fairly drab. Um, that's definitely when uniforms started to become more practical and a lot less flashy than they had been in the 19th century. So this tutorial is going to have a lot of painting brown in it because it's a British uh, um, soldier. And this guy's also wearing a lot of leather equipment. So I'm going to try to put an extra focus in this video on painting leather because, you know, I've done lots of little detail bits previously that are leather in my videos, but I've never really um, handled larger areas of the stuff. So I'm going to be trying to do that here. And also, um, give you some alternate color choices for your leather because I've been kind of sticking to one sort of variety of leather. So, I, you know, I want to show you other ways you can paint leather if you need to have some variation in here. Um, otherwise, this should be a fairly straightforward figure. It's going to be somewhat drab. So, you know, it'll be fun to see, you know, what details we can kind of work in here to keep it a little bit more interesting. Uh, as usual, I have already gone ahead and applied my enamel base coat to this guy, and I've already painted his flesh and skin and also his uh, hair and mustache. I painted the hair and mustache using black with a ch and the foundry charcoal gray triad, and then I gave it a wash of Nuln oil to darken it up a little bit further. I was extra careful this time painting the flesh. I thinned down my colors. Uh, very carefully when I applied it. I took, in other words, I took more time than I sometimes do when I'm painting skin for these tutorials. So I think that should, you know, produce better results. And that's something to think about if you're planning to paint some figures like this that are kind of drab, that don't have lots of color or kind of, you know, interesting equipment going on. You probably want to think about focusing more on the face and skin and spending more time to make sure you get a good result because in lieu of color and other details the face is usually going to be the focal point of the figure so it's on figures like this it pays to make sure that that part is very well painted so okay i don't think there's anything else to add so let's go ahead and get started okay so let's go ahead and get started with painting the jacket on our guy um, I looked at a lot of pictures of uniforms from this period, and my observation was that the uh, jackets that they wore were brown, but it was a very green shade of brown. So in order to um, create that, um, I am sort of making my own uh, sort of triad up, because I didn't really have one that was just perfect for this. So as a base coat for his jacket, I have mixed some bay brown, shade from foundry with some raw linen shade from foundry and the bay brown should be the sort of the majority in that mix so it should be mostly bay brown with some raw linen in there to basically green things up a little bit and also lighten the color next i'm going to apply a pretty heavy agrex earth shade wash over top of that so that i can get um, darker color down in all of the recesses When the wash is dry, I'm going to start applying the first highlighting shade to this jacket. And for that, I'm going to once again use a mix of raw linen shade and a bay brown shade. However, I'm sort of going to reverse the proportions of the mix. So it's going to be mostly raw linen with a small amount of the bay brown in there just to darken it down. And I'm going to put that pretty much all over 
the jacket in a pretty even layer. Um, I have to thin the paint down some, so I'm going to be layering it a bit, but I'm going to be pretty heavy, and I'm going to really apply it everywhere except in the deep folds and creases of the uniform, as you can see. Also, don't forget to do the bill of his hat. That should also be the brown color. I forgot, and I had to go back in later and paint that brown. It's no big deal, but do remember on these uniforms that they definitely have a brown uniform colored bill on their hats. I'm now going to continue the layering process by applying a mix of the raw linen shade color with British equipment canvas shade, and that's a very sort of um, greenish kind of yellow shade, which is the color that we really need to get into this jacket. And I'm going to apply that um, it lightly all over the entire jacket and build up some additional color in areas that I want to get a little bit lighter. And now I'm going to highlight further using just pure British equipment canvas shade. And I'm going to, as you can see, start applying that to the tops of folds and creases and to the edges of sleeves, all those usual areas, and applying it there very heavily and sort of blending and feathering it out from those points. Finally, I'm going to add an edge highlight using British Equipment Canvas Medium, which is quite a light color, so you want to put this on very, very sparingly, and this is indeed really going only along the edges of seams and the edges of sleeves and the pockets and that sort of thing. As I've discussed in earlier videos, when you've got a uniform like this that has a lot of seam edges, a lot of pockets, a lot of detailing on it, you really should consider edge highlighting because it will really help give your figure definition and make that piece of clothing really feel finished and really pop out. Okay, now I'm going to move on to his pants and also sort of the collar of his shirt that peeks out from underneath his uniform jacket. For this, I'm going to start out with a base coat of Foundry Deep Brown Leather Shade, which is I'll admit a very dark brown color, but we're going to layer some other things on top of that that are going to really um, help tone that down quite a bit. I'm now going to start layering on Foundry Spear Shaft Medium. Now this color is substantially lighter than the color that we use as our base, so you're going to find yourself applying quite a few layers here to get good coverage, but at the same time you're also probably going to find it easier to develop, you know, brighter areas and shade areas at the same time because you can, you know, just build up paint over those parts that you want to feel brighter. Now I'm going to add yet another highlight layer, this time of um, buff leather light. Um, and this is when you're going to really start to see the pants appearing the color that we were going for in the beginning, which was sort of a, a, a very sort of brownish, warm khaki color. Because if you look at uniforms from this period, you'll see that while the jacket is very green khaki, the pants tend to be a much more brown, reddish, warm khaki color. Then for one final highlight, I'm going to go ahead and take Foundry Flesh Light and I'm going to apply that onto the areas that would really be getting hit with a lot of light. So, as usual, places like the knees and the tops of all the sort of rumples and creases around, this, particularly the base of these trousers. Next, I'm going to move on to some of the leather areas on this figure, and as promised, I'm going to give you two different shades of leather on this figure because there's so much we need to keep it interesting. Um, and the one area that I'm going to work on first is his boots and also his satchel bag. And I've decided I'm going to make these areas a much redder leather than I sort of normally use when there's only really a small amount of leather that needs painting on the figure. So to start out, you want to base coat these areas using the Foundry Conquer Brown shade color. And when that's done, I'm going to give all these areas a really nice heavy wash of Agrax Earth Shade to sort of darken down in all of the creases and folds. With the wash dry, it's time to start highlighting these red boot areas. 
for that, I'm going to start out with an initial uh, highlight of um, Spear Shaft Shade because that's a nice um, red-brown color. Once I've applied that, I'm going to next add Chestnut Medium to the mix, and I'm going to put that on the edges and kind of blend outwards, and also areas where I want a lot of light, like on the tops of his calves. This color is quite a bit lighter than the last shade, so you're going to want to spend a certain amount of time blending and feathering this out so that you don't get it too strong. And um, at this point, you can start thinking about distressing the leather a little bit because things like this are going to get some wear and tear and obviously the lighter colors on such leather equipment are going to appear on the areas that are getting worn and rubbed and the like. So one way that you can think about applying these colors is by making very fine little lines, hatch marks back and forth over the surface which will make it look like the leather is scratched and is worn and been abraded in a natural way. Um, my final highlight shade on these areas is going to be um, Buff Leather Light. And I'm really only going to use that as an edge highlight and to show areas of really extreme wear. And I've applied that color very thinly. I mean, that is to say, I've thinned it down quite a bit before I applied it so that I can make these very fine little, very light hatch marks and scratch lines kind of coming out from the surface. You probably shouldn't just stick these kinds of lines right in the middle of a darker area, but if you've made sort of an edge highlight in that color, then you can make sort of little lines and scratch marks coming out from that point. And I'm going to do that especially on areas like his straps and the edge of his satchel, the bottom sort of the satchel. Fo really focus on areas where you know that bag would have gotten a lot of wear and tear. And, you know, you can kind of have a lot of fun with this, just applying these little lines and sort of building them up over the much darker colors. And it creates a really nice, very sort of believable effect. All right, so now I'm going to move on to painting the other leather areas on this figure, and I'm going to be using the more traditional color combos that I use when painting leather. Um, I'm going to start out with a base coat of German camouflage, black brown from Vallejo and I'm going to apply that to his holster for his pistol, um, his equipment pouches, his belt, um, also the sort of straps that are or sort of leather suspenders I guess that are holding the belt and equipment pouches in place and of course don't forget the little band that he's got on the front of his hat in between the bill and the top part. I'm now going to highlight all of those areas using um, bay brown light, which is a very red brown. It's really pretty and it, it's, it looks really, really good over this extremely almost black shade of brown that we applied as the base coat. And you can apply this pretty generously. Um, as I've discussed in other tutorials, uh, pick one direction. Uh, one like an edge of whatever you're painting and sort of apply the color thickest there and sort of feather it out because we don't want to get rid of that nice deep base coat entirely because that's really what makes it look like real leather that you've still got those really deep color areas. Now I'm going to add some even higher highlights using um, chestnut brown shade from Foundry and this is really where you're going to want to start only applying paint to really the edges of things. Be very, very sparing with this color. You don't want too much of it. You don't want to get too light. And we really want to, as I said in the last bit, preserve that dark brown color because that's very important to the overall look of the leather. So apply it to one edge and carefully feather it outwards. And now finally, I'm going to add one last highlight of chestnut medium and even more sparingly than the last color. I'm really only going to put this on the extreme edges of the leather equipment and on the edges of the straps. And of course, don't forget to paint the leather um, uh, strap that's on the front of his hat. Um, now I'm going to paint the um, rank insignia on our fellow's sleeves. Now, this is kind of a detail-oriented step. I suppose you could skip this if you really wanted to, but on the other hand, it's a pretty prominent part of our guy's uniform, so if you leave it out, it's going to look a little bit odd. I would suggest for this that you look at some pictures of World War I uniforms to get a sense of what you're doing. It basically, this insignia consists of some sort of scout piping and then 
a certain number of bars or bands which help indicate the rank along with different insignia or, or pips inside that uh, scalloped banding. I am painting my um, piping using the Boneyard triad from Foundry and I'm just going to do all three colors and build it up successively. Um, I'm painting a lieutenant here, so he's going to get one stripe around his sleeve plus two little pips inside of the scalp pattern. Um, also, because these are sort of a sort of a thing that was at his cuffs, right at the where the um, where the sort of that scalloped piping ends, there's going to be a break in the fabric there. Um, and I did that by painting a very thin um, bay brown shade line going upwards, and I started my um, uh, piping out from that point. It's a little bit hard to describe it. I mean, you can't really see it super well here. So I really recommend when you're painting this, go and look at some pictures because you know, it's, it's a little bit difficult to explain exactly what I'm doing. And it, it, it becomes much clearer when you look at photographs of these uniforms. And you can of course vary the number of stripes and the insignia, I mean the pips inside the piping in order to create officers of different ranks. And now I'm gonna paint all the metal buttons and buckles on this uniform. Um, I am going to be making these kind of goldy brass. So I'm gonna be using a base coat of um, Vallejo um, German camouflage black brown with some bronze mixed into it. A lot more brown than bronze, obviously, for the base layer. And this needs to go on all of his buckles and all his buttons. And, you know, it's pretty obvious. And his cap insignia might be bronze-ish. It might be silver-ish. So you need to check what unit you're painting for that. Um, once I'm done, I will then apply a highlight of just uh, pure Vallejo bronze. And then followed up by a high highlight of um, Vallejo old gold to all the areas that I feel really need to feel, you know, well, extra shiny, I guess. I'm gonna finish off the figure by painting his walking stick using the Foundry Musket Stock Brown Triad, and I'm gonna add an extra high highlight using a spear shaft shade to get it a little bit lighter because the Musket Stock Brown Triad is an extremely dark um, one with very little, um, difference between the three colors. All right, so that's our British World War I Lieutenant figure all finished up. Um, I hope you found my extra focus on painting leather to be useful and at least somewhat instructive. Um, if you take anything away from this video, I hope that it is that when you have a figure that's kind of drab with lots of shades of brown like this guy, you really need to put extra time and attention into painting all those areas if you want to take the figure to the next level because you know when you've got a figure that's got bright colors and a lot of interesting equipment and things going on for people to look at that will help sell the figure make it interesting without you necessarily having to do such a good job but with figures like this if anything i think to get them to look really good you actually have to do more work because they're not gonna really kind of sell themselves in the same way those other figures are. And as I mentioned in the introduction, definitely put extra time into the face because especially on figures like this, the face is really gonna turn into the focal point of the figure. Um, so if you enjoyed this video, please leave me comments. As always, what you liked, what you didn't like, what you wanna see in the future. I am keeping track of things that you are telling me, so I will definitely be doing user requests at some point, pretty soon probably. Um, also like this video, share it with your friends, and subscribe if you want to keep seeing these because, you know, that way you'll know when the newest one comes out. So, once again, uh, I hope you liked all this, and I will see you next time.